Today we're going to be using another percent application, simple interest. So when we're talking about this, we need to define a few terms. The amount earned or paid for the use of money is called interest. So let's write that in. The amount of money deposited or borrowed is the principal. Interest that is earned or paid only on the principal is called simple interest, and we'll be talking about that today. And the percent of the principal earned or, the pay, or paid per year is the annual interest rate. The balance can be calculated on an account that earns simple interest by taking the sum of the principal and adding to it the interest. So this is balance, the balance of the account. So the formula we're going to be using a lot today is that interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the amount of time in years. So the concept today is that whenever you um, borrow or save money, okay, that is you, you earn interest or you pay interest. So if you're taking out a loan to buy a car, there's going to be interest for borrowing that money. If you deposit money into a savings account, the bank will pay you interest based on the amount of time you have the money deposited, you know, and the principal balance and so forth. So that's kind of how things work. We always earn or pay interest, and it's you're going to learn today how we how that's actually calculated on a simple interest um, situation. I don't know why this isn't working properly, but we will get there. We'll hear what Tim and Moby have to say about this. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Wow, free checking and no ATM fees? Where do I sign up? Dear Tim and Moby, we are learning about interest in math class, but I still don't get it. Can you tell me what it is? Sincerely, La Diamond. Well, interest is extra money that a bank gives you for keeping your money there. It also works the other way. When you borrow money from a bank, you can't just do it for free. A bank charges you a fee, and that's called interest too. Interest is calculated as a percent, which means the more money you have in the bank, the more extra money you get. And the more money you borrow, the more extra money you have to pay back. There are two types of interest, simple interest and compound interest. Your bank offers simple interest, huh? Okay, I've got $100 here. Let's deposit it and see what happens. I'd like to open an account, please. free toaster with my new bank account. You didn't steal this from the kitchen, did you? Okay, good. According to this paperwork, my account has an annual interest rate of 12%. That means the interest gets calculated once a year. Interest can also be calculated monthly, quarterly, and even daily. Yeah, I know, you offer yearly interest. Anyway, my $100 is called the principal. Now, to find out how much interest we get, we multiply the interest rate by the principal. Let's see, 12% equals 0 0.12 times $100. That's $12. So every year, Moby's Bank adds $12 to my account. Add that to the $100 principal, and I'd finish my first year at the First National Bank of Moby with $112 in my account. Woohoo! 
Time to head out to the Ming Garden Buffet. Well, compound interest is a little different. It's paid on both the principal and the interest you've already accumulated. There's really no easy formula for this. Uh, to calculate compound interest, it's really best to make a chart like this one. Yeah, I know, it's complicated, but stick with me and I promise you'll get it. We've already determined that your annual percentage rate, the amount of interest you offer per year, is 12%. Now, if you decided to offer monthly compound interest, you wouldn't pay me 12% interest every month. You'd be giving cash away hand over fist, and your bank wouldn't stay in business. Instead, you'd break things down into 12 monthly installments of 1% each. 1% interest every month doesn't sound great, but just you wait. At the end of the year, I'll have more money than I would if you gave me 12% annual interest. Now, let's start filling out that chart. We know that 1% of 100 is $1. So, after the first month, I'd have $101. The difference with compound interest is that for the next month, you have to calculate 1% of $101, not just 1% of $100 even. Let's see, 0 0.01 times $101 is $1 and 1 cent. Now add that to the principal and you get $102 and 1 cent. For the next month, you take 1% of that $102 and 1 cent to get another dollar and 2 cents in interest. Add it on to the $102 and 1 cent and by next month, my principal is $103 and 3 cents. If you keep filling out the chart, you can see that the amount of interest I've accrued over a year, plus my principal, comes out to $112.67 instead of just $112. If I got that deal, well, not only could I hit the buffet, I could buy a candy bar afterwards, too. So, do you understand the difference between simple and compound interest? You don't. Are you really sure that you should be running a bank if you don't know how to calculate interest? Okay, this is definitely from my bedroom. Okay, so let's try an example. If you have a principal balance of $350, and an annual rate of 2.9% for three years, how much interest will you earn? So you use the formula, interest is equal to principal times rate times time. So plug in what you know. Our principal is $350. Our rate can be expressed as a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left. And our time has to be calculated in years, and they give it to me in years. So through multiplication, I would take 350 times 0 0.029 times 3. Okay, so the interest for this situation would be $30.45. Make sure you're rounding to the nearest penny. That is the hundredth place. Let's try another one. In this example, we're taking $2,000, let's say we're depositing it at an annual rate of 3% for 27 months. It's real important that we convert our time to years. So we have to decide how many years to 27 months is. So a quick conversion would be that there are 12 months in one year. So it's kind of like multiplying 27 over 1 times 1 over 12, or dividing 27 by 12, because you'd multiply across and divide by what's on bottom, but using this dimensional analysis, it lets you know that the months cancel out. So I'll get a decimal, and it's okay. So let's use 2.25 for my unit of time. So 27 months equals 2.25 years, and I have to have years to do the calculation correctly. So my interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. So 2,000 times 0 .03. Remember, I am taking my percent and changing it to a decimal to give its numeric value. 
and my 2.25 years, I'll get an interest of $135 added to my account. Okay, we'll do a few more examples. Um, in this case, I kind of want to bring your attention to a visual aid. If you draw the tri triangle right here like this, and we have our interest on top, and the three things that get multiplied together, the principal, the rate, and the time. No matter which one is missing, and by missing I mean like if, you, like if you draw this on your paper you could cover it up with your finger, I won't be able to do that so I'll just erase it. If the interest is missing, you will multiply the principal, the rate, and the time. That's what we've been doing. But what if the principal is missing? If the principal is missing, you will be given the interest earned and the rate and the time. And you can kind of see the way the pyramid's set up. It looks like interest is being divided by the product of rate and time, and that's exactly what you do. You would multiply your rate times your time and then divide. And so that kind of happens for any of the ones on the bottom, right? If rate is missing, take your interest and divide it by the product of the principal times time. And if time is missing, take your interest and divide it by the product of principal times rate. So we're going to examine a lot of these different scenarios. So this first one, you purchase a bond for 450. So that's our principal. So let's identify things now as we see them. This is principal. The bond earns 6.5%. That's our rate in simple annual interest. How much interest will the bond earn after 10 years? And that's our time, and we've checked it's in years. So what one's missing? If we have PRT, the one that's missing is interest, so it's just like the first two examples. Let's go ahead and multiply those three amounts with this formula. And after multiplication, we will find that the interest earned is 292.50. Okay, in this example, it wants to know how much money we deposit in a savings account that earns 5.4% simple interest to earn 48.60 in 18 months. So what am I given? I'm given my rate. I'm given my interest. I earned 48.60 in interest, and I'm given my time. So the one that I'm missing is the principal, and I have to convert my time, 18 months, in two years. So I'm going to divide 18 by 12. And I get 1.5. It's a year and a half. So 1.5 years. So if I use my formula, interest equals principal rate time, I can plug in what I know. I know my interest earned. I do not know my principal, but I know my rate as a decimal and my time as years. I can go ahead and multiply these two numbers together. So I'll have, I'll rewrite it, 4860 is equal to, when I multiply these two, I'm just kind of rearranging them so it looks like the coefficient of the letter P. Oops. Let me say that and then I write it. Okay. <coughs> All right, so I have 0 .081, so 81 thousandths, times the principal. Now, all I have to do is divide both sides by 0 .081 to get my missing number. And that's the same thing as I showed you with the triangle. If I take my interest, which is on top, and then divide it by the product of the two variables I know, which are rate and time, I will get a principal equal to $600. That's what I started with. To check your work, you could always work it backwards. Take 600 times 0 .054 times 1.5, and you should get your interest of 4860. Okay, next one, you deposit $600 in your account for six years, and you earn 
$72 in interest, what is the rate? So now we're missing the percentage, and you can tell because all of those numbers, none of them have a percent. So we have principal, we have time, and we have interest. And interest always equals principal rate times time. So 72 is equal to 600 times R times 6. So I'm going to go ahead and use the commutative property to move around the 600 and the 6 so I can multiply them together. And I'll get 72 is equal to 3600R. To solve for R, I have to undo the multiplication, so I'll divide both sides by 3600. I'll get a decimal number, and I change that to a percentage. Since it's my rate, I can change my percentage, my decimal, to a percent, and I say the rate is equal to 2%. One last example, if Susie purchases a bond for $4,000 and earns $800 in interest at 8% annual interest, how long did she allow the bond to accumulate the interest? So in this case, we're missing time because we have our principal, we have our interest, and we have our rate. So using the basic formula, substitute in what you know, 800 in interest on a $4,000 bond, times 0 0.08 t is missing. So we can use the property of multiplication so that we can multiply those two together to simplify and get 800 equals 320 times t. And then we just have a one-step equation when we're dividing by the coefficient on both sides. So our unit of time in this case is going to be 2.5 years and it's okay to leave the decimal if you want to change it to two and a half years with a fraction or even convert it back to months to 30 months but I would just leave it as years since that's what we want.